welcome to the 12th cast podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to uh, the 13th gate, which is all about creating the new, um, moving into uh, solutions for the times that we're in. Um, this is a podcast that also is a platform for people who don't necessarily want to be um, going public with uh, any major opinions due to censorship which is uh, a pretty global issue right now. And uh, so it's bringing forth the people from a uh, little bit uh, everywhere around the world, sharing their opinions, sharing where they're at, their processes, their goals, their dreams, um, and maybe also some of the hardships that they're experiencing. So today I have two gentlemen with me and uh, we're just going to chat it out and uh, just see what arises, um, invite the listeners to, um, you know, have an open heart and open mind and uh, get involved in their own process. So be inspired to get more involved in their own process and to get out there and share content in whichever way possible. Uh, if doing so anonymously <laughs> is uh, where you feel you're at, you can always uh, contact me and um, uh, maybe I'll have you on, potentially share this space with you as well. So uh, just to get started, I thought I'd share a little bit about um, where I've been uh, observing the collective, observing the processes that I'm going through within myself. And um, I feel like I've moved through... Um, a lot of the truths that would take me to the, the precipice of, of major change. So over the last five years, coming into so much awareness about, um, you know, the history uh, of, of how everything was sort of built up uh, within the institutions, uh, the structures of society, and uh, that led me into some pretty dark places, you know, just understanding uh, the prophet before people, um, you know, sort of backbone that's that's been keeping everything moving in the direction that it's moving in. Uh, and then seeing it come to full fruition uh, with everything going on right now in terms of, you know, big pharma, big tech, censorship, medical tyranny, so on and so forth. Um, and I guess, you know, it's, it's a difficult space to be in after coming into so much awareness and knowing that there's so much that needs to change. <laughs> and, and having been brought up uh, in that old system, uh, you know, it feels like, okay, well, where do I start? Where do I take that first step to change? Because I was literally brought up in that system. So creating the new means unraveling so many layers in order to develop the new habits, uh, you know, work against the grain, move in a direction that is, that is not the path isn't already created. Um, so I find myself battling it out, uh, you know, spending too much time uh, with, with, with technology uh, and then realizing, okay, we're, you know, trying to find out, find the limit between what the good use of technology is versus moving down this kind of artificial timeline with technology and just going completely into, you know, quote unquote metaverse or <laughs> um, just being, spending all of my time and attention in this virtual world, um, you know, with people and uh, with narratives. So I'm, I'm really working on that. And also uh, with my children, uh, trying to find that limit because they grew up in that, uh, that whole technological space. And it was very different than, let's say, 50 years ago, even, and especially 100 years ago, where all the kids were outside all the time. And they were, they were you know, moving and they were building things with their hands and getting dirty and I find that that's just slowly been taken away. So uh, when 2020 hit and we were just all completely uh, kept in the house with these devices, um, they've developed habits as well. They're definitely attached to, you know, wanting to go and check out movies, play games, contact their friends. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm really, as a mother, in this space of, of trying to figure out you know, 
how to manage the tech, the, the, the real uh, influence of technology in our lives, um, given all the information that I know and that I've been speaking out against for years. Uh, and then also, uh, I think really trying to implement um, health and wellness on a, on, a, on a very real level to manage the stress and, um, you know, everything uh, in terms of, you know, virus parasites, you know, regarding food, we've just been eating so much artificial food throughout the course of our lives more and more just being born into it, you know, growing up eating a whole bunch of things that weren't necessarily natural, and then coming into the awareness of like, really what the difference is between whole foods and all these processed foods. Um, So, uh, you know, I've, I've been spending many years throughout my life, like really, you know, going on raw diet, raw food diets. And, but just trying to find this, I'm now just trying to find this nice balance with my kids and with um, supply, you know, food supply chains, like where to get the food in in my local community, um, what to eat, what makes sense with my geographical location, what makes sense um, in terms of, you know, time, time management, like, (laughs) there's a lot of factors. So so I'm kind of just like flowing in this space. And, you know, I I definitely feel like, yeah, I want to return to something pure. But at the same time, I'm not sure exactly how far out and how far off grid that is going to be. Um, If there's communities, I know that there's people just going off grid, like, the people around me, the amount of people around me that moved, like these awesome families doing homeschooling that moved, they're just like, they've gone pretty far out and they didn't necessarily, they just sort of all made their decisions individually and didn't necessarily say, Hey, let's come together. Let me find a group. Uh, There are a few, but most of them just sort of independently have taken a step forward for themselves. And so I've, observe that that's the pattern going on. And, um, and, and that's good. I think that's a step forward. Um, but it's not necessarily going to sustain over time, because I think we do need each other, we do need communities. And we do need to sort of start working on really structuring that um, self sufficiency within smaller communities, um, and sharing on tasks and you know, and all of these things. So, so yeah, so I'm sort of investigating a lot of communities out there. I've been doing this for five years now and uh, looking at some of the challenges and some of the benefits and trying to figure out where I'm going to take my step, my next step (laughs) and not disconnect myself completely from, I'm sort of tied in to, you know, different people and uh, different Dharma here myself so um having to find like okay you know where can what can i do next that accommodates for all of these different factors so yeah so that that's sort of where i'm at and i've also been keeping up to date with everything going on in terms of you know all the things coming out um d has put together an awesome um channel so you know i've been looking at all the positive things that have been coming out and there's a lot of I mean, I feel totally hopeful that uh, we are going to be building this sort of, you know, a a new uh, decentralized intelligence, a new democracy, a new um, way of interacting uh, with each other uh, and a lot of transparency, you know, within the larger structures coming uh, more into full swing in the next few years regarding uh, what they're doing and the corporations and all of that. I think that there's not much that's going to be able to be hidden from, uh, from our view. So yeah, keeping up with that has been hopeful um, despite it's, you know, coming into some, some more tougher information that's, that's been a bit more challenging to look at um, regarding, you know, all of the, um, the more, uh, I guess I should say globalist plans, um, tying, you know, the bio, um, the, uh, the digital, the bio digital convergence being one of my main concerns uh, that I've been focused on as well for the last few years. 
uh, merging technology uh, and biology and and what that means you know it, it basically means it's it's a different it's changing the human the the human biology completely and a lot of people aren't really aware of what's going on on that level and nor are they 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 don't seem to be concerned either which is the con- most concerning part for me is the level that they're at in terms of the information that they have access to and what they've been able to assimilate and digest. Um, There's still like a whole bunch of people that are really not looking at that information at all because there's like steps involved, right. In, In gaining that greater awareness. And so I'm also participating in building, you know, different ways to address that in terms of, you know, meeting people where they're at giving them the information that they need to hear uh, at that time in order to take that next step because they can't jump from a to you know d or e or f without certain information in between because what's happening right now is so (laughs) sci-fi it's just so out there (laughs) that that people can't even comprehend you know it's like when I was coming into information a few years ago it was like is this this can't be real like this is sci-fi you know and you go through the cognitive dissonance of what's happening so I've tested out the field and like if I send information some really 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 intense information to someone um, that isn't prepared like they're just like they're like no this is a fake video or this is not real or you know like they they can't even look at it like it's impossible for them to even see that that it could be a potential because it is so out there so um working on um coming up with solutions to that problem is also something that I'm doing and uh and and hopefully you know um going to be participating more and more in and finding ways to assess where people are at more quickly and say, okay, you know, this is what they need for that next step, you know, in order to get there. And we can't, we don't have that much time. Like there's a certain time limit on, you know, on what's going on as well. And we need to be able to address people without generating too, you know, too much emotion in them. Because once the emotion takes over, then the thinking capacities sort of <laughs> dwindle. And, uh, and then it's just, you know, uh, more cognitive dissonance and, and more, you know, when the defenses go up, it's, it's difficult to continue on with the, with the conversation. So yeah, so that in a nutshell, well, is can... where I'm at. what's that? In a nutshell, that's where I'm at. And uh, I was maybe I could... say, uh, I would take it up. Sorry, I can't hear you. I was going to say if I could uh, take the opportunity to just uh, jump in there when you're talking about, um, you know, finding people and meeting them on on their level or figuring out where they're at. I mean, I think uh, I think there's definitely obviously there's there's the way I see it is there's a number of stages to that. You know, it's kind of like a, a color spectrum um, as opposed to very, you know, black or white kind of thing. And I could say, you know. I mean, I would never necessarily put myself in the category on completely one side of being asleep. Um, but I think for certain people at some points and the people that are that a lot of like minded people that are in this community are feeling frustrated with are people that are completely asleep and how to get through to them. And I think that there's people, first of all, I think they have to take their first step to be just within themselves open to asking questions, you know, and once people start to ask questions, and and they're open to having discussions and they start to realize on their own that that something is off that something is wrong then then they're kind of uh, able to kind of take in new knowledge to take in new information uh and that's like really the beginning of kind of their journey into you know what can explode into a whole realm of going from you know uh is this really about uh you know covid are these measures uh, acceptable to you know, social credit score and the toxins and bioweapons and whatnot. And I think everyone has their own kind of timeline of where they're at in that journey. And, you know, it, inevitably it ends up in uh, spending quite a lot of time, exp- intense research, you know, uh, maybe over a couple of weeks and then, you know, the, their eyes are open. And I think 
a, a positive place where you end up, or, or ideally, is to a place where you can con con um, create concrete actions and ways to kind of come together in like-minded communities, uh, whether that's, you know, living completely off-grid and sustainability, that's one option, whether it's, um, you know, just joining joining in groups like this uh, and discussing. You know, I, I joined another Zoom yesterday with some people, uh, also like-minded people, one person that I knew and then five others that I didn't. And, you know, part of what uh, their whole option or their choices in trying to lock us down is to divide us, to, to, to have our ability, our right to freedom of assembly, to share ideas, you know, to keep this from going on. So I think it's really important that, you know, we can share these, these ideas. And I think as valuable as it is to look on, you know, resources like Telegram and see the latest news, uh, balancing between things that are, that are heavy, uh, that are, you know, considered news. I wouldn't call them reality because probably more smoke and mirrors, but things tangible um, and, and ending up in, in something that you can, you can kind of raise your vibration and feel like you're, you're, you're with the community, you're, you're bouncing ideas off each other in, in really how to uh, move forward with this, um, you know, so I, I think that's it is finding people like-minded people, friends, family, finding out where they are and, you know, uh, information that is way too advanced on on the, the depths of the rabbit hole and deep state and cabal is never going to get through to someone that is uh, completely asleep that watches, you know, uh, common broadcasting corporation and whatever uh, most of their day. Uh, anyway, yeah, just, that's just uh, something I wanted to put out there. Um, uh, maybe uh, Kay has some other things to mention on that. Yeah, I mean... Uh... I mean, the main thing is that, you know, it looks like the people of our planet has gotten disconnected from our creator, from ourselves and from our community. And now it's a huge wake up call. Uh, I personally don't believe that this is fully a human situation. I feel like there's great uh, things at play on a, on a much deeper level, a demonic level. Uh, you just look at the music with the Travis Scott event or you look at the products like death, uh, I think it's called death water. It's like death mountain water. And they're performing full-blown black rituals on, uh, on their YouTube channel, go to their website. It'll blow your mind. It's a company that came out of nowhere now worth like a billion dollars. And at Austin city limits, that's, uh, in, in, um, Texas, uh, I was told by a patient of mine that all they had available was this water. And you can clearly see a video where they talk about our intention is that when you open this water, a demonic spirit comes into the body. Then you've got COVID, you know, backwards is the whole Divok, Dibik, you know, which is a demon, you know, it directly translates into a demon, um, that, it, you know, takes over the soul, or you've got the National Academy of Television, Arts, and Science, uh, which is the entire, entire, like, study and science behind videos and how they keep you on these viral uh, watching videos of, um, of, like, Netflix, for example, and beyond. And that just happens to be uh, NATAS, National Academy of Television, Arts, and Science, is Satan backwards. And, you know, it's like, it's so clearly in plain sight uh, and setting religion aside, there is a light and dark battle. And it's honestly, at the end of the day, a lot of people are probably going to die. A lot of people are dying. I have a lot of patients that are dying. I have a lot of uh, doctor friends that are reporting back to me that they're dying or they're losing their hair or their eyebrows are falling out or their hormones are dysregulated. And so, yeah, it is a time for serious solution. But it's also, I think, above and beyond all of that, it's a time when we're facing our death on the deathbed here uh, for a reclamation of our connection to something greater than ourselves. That's how we lost this whole thing is we just got lazy and fat and happy. And, you know, um, in the Western world, we get really easy, you know, it's easy peasy. And so, um, but it is a thing, you know, and there, there is a black magic ritual going on. I mean, just, just the other day in Illinois, I saw a whole thing about how they said, Hey kids, join us at Satan club. And they have like a whole satanic um, program for children, you know, where kids showed up to this thing. And it's just, it's, it's the, it's the disconnection of ourselves 
from spirit. And now they're trying to connect us into the metaverse, which will chemically and, you know, consciously enslave humanity for all eternity. And we need to be talking about this shit. And we need to be talking about the fact that I'm watching them pour out their chemical construct in our skies over where I live and around the planet of people I know from traveling. And it's just in plain sight now and action is needing to be taken. Thanks for the share. Um, I agree. Action is needed to be taken. And this is kind of where we're at. So there's two things that are coming to mind. The first is some of the language that you're using is a language that is outright rejected by, uh, you know, just people that haven't been tuned into that sort of thing at all. So this is where I find the challenges come in is what you're talking about delves into very esoteric understanding right? Of what's going on. And then you have people that are on the outskirts that are just like what I call just regular good people that have been watching, uh, you know, uh, sitcoms and Netflix and, and, and are just looking at things, taking things from a, a face value because they haven't gone deep enough into themselves. They haven't done any necessarily spiritual work and, and that sort of thing, or even, you know, haven't been tapped into religion. A lot of, uh, this generation and the last one weren't exposed in the same way, <laughs> maybe in the U S and in different places. But I, but I find there's just a lot of people around me that, that like that language just right away turns them off. And, and they kind of, they, you know, they don't, they're not looking at what's behind it because they don't understand what's involved in, um, in, you know, what the definition of these esoteric things mean. Right. Because we're speaking of things in terms of energy, right? When we go, when we start using this language, like even, even with, with the, the gematria, gematria, you know, why would we look at the gematria of a word? Because there's an energy behind it that associates with numbers and that uh, connects it to uh, different symbols that have been used, you know, to create society, to build consciousness. And this stuff is like way kind of out there for a lot of people. So what do you say uh, in terms of, you know, meeting people where they are at? And or is that something that you even think is necessary? What are your thoughts on that? Um, personally, for me, I, I really think it's a time where, you know, I've got a best friend that went the way of the, the blue pill. I've got uh, friends and even a family member, one family member, and uh, one of my greatest spiritual teachers, you know, uh, did went through with the with the vex and um, and was poisoned by that and then got sick. And I have to sit back and watch. And, you know, I think our work is to share and to be loving and to be supportive. And then the ones that don't listen, it's like next. I mean, it's how it was in a pa with a patient running through the office. You know, it's like, hey, this is what's going on. Are you interested? No. Next. And it was, you know, and it's really. Um, and it is about getting, you know, connected with the ones that are that are aware and awake and, and the ones that haven't. I mean, if you share with them and they don't, uh, it's just time to move on and we have to cut our loss. And it sounds terrible. It's just reality um, because we're going to spend a thousand hours trying to take that one person that's fighting for their own enslavement and stupidity. And um, it's holding us back from doing our work. So the other the other piece I do want to mention is one of the things I noticed that how has this system, this technocratic, demonic system, AI algorithm thing, whatever's going on here in our infinite universe, we're floating around on this planet has taken over is by distracting our uh, our, our presence and our awareness. And it's gobbled up all of our energy around, you know, creating and positivity and all this. And so the energy that I put towards all of that was eating up my creative capacity. So I think it's a really huge thing. At one point, you know enough, and then it's your ego trying to figure out what do I do? What's going to be best? How's it going to be safest? And it's a real calling for, on it. That's why I go straight to the more energetic consciousness, spiritual side, because that's the only thing that's going to shift this thing is where we're going to be internally guided from that divine crystal within that we've lost connection with, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's a really important piece right there. A lot of us got captured by social media. Um, 
you know, it is designed to go and uh, stimulate the limbic system, stimulate, you know, the, the dopamine and, and like the release of all those chemicals that just, you know, it's an attention economy. And our generation, we definitely got captured by that. And I think everybody in general got captured by that when they got locked in their homes in 2020. And I think that was the, you know, the end goal and the purpose in terms of, you know, the deep learning machines and gathering as much data as possible. But um, what you mentioned about it taking away from our being in our essence, our being present in our world to create right with the natural world to create with the elements to create with what's around us is what we're having to find and talking about the hive mind it's like that was the timeline split right and coming into this um this greater awareness with within the the larger collective mind through social media which is also coined the hive mind and picking up on information because you know the more minds involved the more synthesis and and the easier it is to reach further and further into all of these different uh spaces to uh, bring information forward together but then exactly what happened was you know losing touch with ourselves losing touch with what we're creating in 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 the real And so I think that split from the hive mind happened for a lot of people. And I remember when I got unplugged from the hive mind, like when I actually am like my, my consciousness released itself from the hive mind, it was, I felt it viscerally. I felt it spiritually. And I definitely um, felt the shift in my attention, like, you know, social media, no longer captures my attention. Like, I don't even feel like tuning in, in the same way. And yeah, I'm producing information in a different way. I'm not connected uh, to the hive mind in order to go and source from it. It harvests energy from you, but you're also harvesting energy from it. Right. So it's like reconnecting with this deeper space and not this artificial, artificially simulated space. Um, there's a lot in there. Yeah. And people had to choose. And, and I noticed that when people disconnected from the hive mind, woo, things slowed down. Like you can hear it in their voice. They weren't like going a hundred miles a minute anymore. They were, you know, back into this like more natural rhythm with the earth and, you know, being able to have an attention span that lasts longer than five minutes or whatever, you know, um, being able to really move into studying things on a different level. Um, So there's a lot of value in disconnecting from the hive mind, but with everything going on, it is just so attractive to stay in there. But I think you have to spend your time gathering as much information, coming into the awareness that you need to come into. And then once you've got what you needed in terms of like, Oh shit, this is it. This is, you know, um, unplugging and then building on on the natural grid from there on out to move mm-hmm. forward what do you think d yeah i mean i uh, i definitely think that there's a lot of things that are set up as uh basically as a distraction machine you know like your 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 mental energy has power uh, you know you you bring energy down you channel energy from the heavens from other planes and where you choose to focus your mental energy, your that's your output. And um, you know, th- this is an age of information. It's you know, the age of communication. It has been that this energy has been moving in since 2000. You know, a couple of decades before it'll be a couple after for for the next couple thousand years. And um, you know, it's just everything is at your fingertips. And you know, for a while, it's almost like a like a baby playing and frolicking. You have all these things, but being able to 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 recenter yourself and focus uh, between you know dipping in and, and gathering information from externally and processing it, but then uh, you know being able to to recenter yourself in, in the light, in truth, in to, doing things like uh, mantras and and continuing to focus your energy because uh, my energy is your energy, our energy is you know the collective energy. You know, there's the what 
And what people, you know, some people already know it and have known all their life and feel it. And other people are starting to discover that, is that we, we are connected. And when you are fully in tune and you're raising your vibration, you're raising the, the vibration of earth, you know, this human resonance, uh, you know, ripples when there's a uh, tragic events that happens to humanity on other sides of the world, it, it lowers the vibration. And it's up to us collectively to uh, continue to center that ourselves and to center for Mother Earth to, um, you know, just continue to just hold presence for, for being in the light and the truth. Um, a lot of that information, uh, you know, a lot is lies, you know, like what is out there is, is there's truth and there's lies and just trying to separate uh, the noise from what is what is good and what you feel inside is important. You know? um, yeah, and I think I think right now it's very important that you know there is strength in numbers. And as much as you know in this in this province and in other countries around the world, uh, you know media will try to belittle it and make us seem like a smaller number than we are, but we are not small. And there's a lot of like-minded people and. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, as a collective, we need to, to find the time, like to really come together, you know, like it's either kind of, you know, there's either fight or flight, you know, it's either you're going to stand up for your rights as, as much as you can not allow people to push you back uh, so that you can, you know, be at peace to do your things, to develop your communities, you know, like when, the, when things become overreaching, uh, we got to rely on each other to, uh, you know, find resourceful ways to, to stand up for ourselves. Um, yeah, I mean, I think in the end, in the end, there's no end or beginning, sure. But, uh, you know, looking at one of the things that I found inspirational this year was uh, uh, hearing people talk about this project Looking Glass, which apparently, I mean, without going too far into it, it was a way to uh, feed in algorithms and kind of figure out how you know forces could try and control the future of humanity and pretty much the where the, why they disbanded that project was no matter what kind of inputs they they seem to feed into the machine after a specific point in time which was i believe it was the end of the mayan calendar uh december 21st 2012 they were not able to, to change the output and that you know the timelines all converged which is um you know i think what people are realizing is you know, free will is, it, it cannot be broken as long as you believe it, you know, and when, when, when media and government try to spin things to make you believe things, it, it's illusionary. And that's what leads you back to just, you know, being peaceful, being within yourself and listening to, you know, the quietness and channeling the light, because that is what is true. In terms of moving forward with this discussion, uh, I think, we're all sort of talking about the same thing. One of the things that is coming up is, you know, the, 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 the paradox between holding the light and standing in the truth, because standing in the truth isn't necessarily negative right? Because <laughs> the truth is the truth. It, it's neutral, but it's, it's negative for a lot of people right now. So there's sort of a paradox there uh, of bringing forward this new kind of the solutions and the new way of living that has nothing to do with the old ways and the old systems. And then holding you know, being in truth with what we're seeing happening in the world uh, can often seem, you know, like basically the, the opposite of holding the light. It, it can feel to others, it's very painful, right? It's like, why are you doing, I've had people tell me like, why are you doing this to me? You know, I'll share truths with them. They're like, why are you doing this to me? It's like, well, I'm not trying to do anything. I, I'm just, I'm just being true in the sense where I've, you know, I'm just sharing what, what I've observed through a lot of uh, okay. many years of, of observation and, and research. Okay. 
basically, sure. there, you know, I, I, I sense that there's that there is a paradox that we're, you know, we're having to sit in that paradox. And it is one of the, 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 you know, the natural laws, it's like, everything, ha everything has its opposite, you know, and, and we live in a world of, of paradox in that sense, the a world of duality, right. And, and so we're having to hold this, this energy um, of truth, right, this, you know, sharing truths with others, right now, you know, just sharing, sharing simple observations, sharing simple truth uh, can often, you know, be perceived by others as, um, as a negative, right, because it's painful to come into certain truths. So holding trying to be present to be in the quote unquote light and at the same time mm. to stand in in my truth to stand in in my own understanding my own convictions my own understanding of the truth there's a something there that you know i think that's the greatest challenge with with the people around me you know we're trying to come to the truth, the objective truth, right? Because we have our subjective truths, right? Which is based off of layers and layers of um, personal, you know, associations to different things and how we've come up with concepts and ideas. And then we're, we're coming to this objective truth, right? So it's like, everyone is having to work together on that. And, um, and, it, and it's, it's kind of painful, you know, bringing forth information that people don't want to hear or don't want to look at when it's in plain sight. It's like, why, why are you doing this to me? I thought that was you know, one of the more interesting responses. Like, well, you know, people take things personally when it doesn't suit, you know, what they, what they want to hear. And, and that's, that's what we're up against. Like none of the stuff that I came into, none of the information that I came into, I wanted to hear. <laughs> you know, we don't want to hear that, you know, the systemic corruption has led to m all the problems we're seeing today, and that we're all personally responsible for fixing them, that we can't just hand over our responsibility to, um, to corporations, right, or, or to government that doesn't, you know, put people before profit that has its own agendas, that has its own um, ideas about where it wants to take, you know, the future of humanity. So yeah, so kind of being in that paradox, um, what you had mentioned, D kind of brought me, you know, again, circling back to that space, it's like, we're, we're really walking in, in paradox these days, and having to create the new one foot in the new one foot in the old, and then that balancing act of, you know, not tipping over too much into one side and, and losing touch with what other people are going through. Because, Kay, you mentioned, yeah, we got to move forward. And we just sort of like, you know, you have to make decisions for yourself. And I'm not going there. I'm going over here. Right. But we're still all intermingled uh, in, in this space together. And so it's, it's impossible to completely separate, right, uh, from people, um, you know, choosing different things and believing different things. Um, so navigating that space and, and coming into tools to navigate that space is, has been a lot of my focus as well, you know, cultivating the patience. Like I have such a bad temper. It's very easy for me to just like, you know, not even want to deal to just say, I'm not even going to talk to that person or I'm not even, you know, because I don't have the patience. Uh, and then with certain other people, like I've really just taken the time to slowly share, you know, at a pace that is possible to maintain um, where dialogue can be reached. So how have you both, a um, question for you both is how have you experienced that space with others and living in that paradox, living in that duality? And what are some of the, the things that you've, you know, observed and also can maybe share in, in terms of staying in balance while interacting uh, one foot in the old world, one foot in the new world? 
Yeah, well, that's definitely, uh, it's almost like a, a physical exercise. It's like a workout because, you know, you're constantly, uh, you know, battling with the ego in yourself, which you really need to let that go. As you said, you know, that can be a source of frustration for you. I've experienced that uh, with people in my direct family as well. Um, and, you know, just it's hard to always be aware of this, especially when you can feel triggered by uh, them being on opposite sides of the same thought. But, you know, there's still a part of you. Uh, we are all one, you know, like trying to really understand that in the times of frustration, uh, you know, is important. Um, you know, uh, trying to get information into someone and have them feel the same way you feel about it is, is not always viable, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I've, I've missed out on uh, a couple years of a uh, relationship with someone close to me um, and trying to find a space to put that in and know that, you know, that's where it is right now. And what are the best ways to approach it? I mean, at this point, uh, personally, uh, sending, sending information on truth back and forth, you know, um, but I feel like there's only so much of, of my time and energy that I can spend to try and dedicate to that and realize that, you know, um, you know, that yes, they were born into the existence. I chose them to be there for a reason. And I can try to kind of hold, hold the space for them and try to give them positive things and improve myself by learning patience, which is definitely one of my, uh, you know, life journeys to be more patient and more accepting of these things. But, uh, you know, ultimately, um, you know, you still got to continue to focus on the positive things in your life, positive people that inspire you and, you know, surround yourself with them, you know, um, to try and continue, you know, to pursue the ascension of, of where, um, you know, trans transforming from the third to the fifth dimension and, and every, all the, all the, the people that do have that intention and where their will is. I mean, I think that most of your, your valuable time should be spent there uh, without, you know, sh completely shunning people out of your life that, that are not. Um, Thanks for yeah. sharing. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about all this, Kay? You know, I love what Paul Selig says. I don't know if you know this guy, but he's uh, anyone listening, uh, listen to his books. He's great. And, you know, it's a it's a powerful uh, reminder. But he talks about operating from the upper room. And ultimately, you know, for me, uh, I've come very close to death, as most really good healers in their lives have. Both of you might have also been through that. And, and it is a moment where the client is on the deathbed and they really have to face the only thing that we know is true, which is our ultimate demise on the 3D. You know, we won't we won't survive this. It's 100 percent fatal uh, just being born on this planet. And so in that um sort of depressing sounding statement it ultimately is very liberating and it's like man if you if you aren't going to be here and all, everything that you know will literally be washed away i mean you look at your generations you look at back at old photos of black and white of people you don't even know that were your mother's mother um no one even knows who the hell these people were it's pretty crazy i mean they're all gone and they're all buried in the earth in the form of ashes and um, that for me is very liberating. And so operating in the upper room and, and you know, in this darkness and this demonic force is going to consume people. And while the, the people of the, want to see the, the, the new wor world emerge that our hearts know is possible, I would say that's us and our listeners, um, you know, simultaneously are witnessing the ones being consumed by the darkness is it allows for us for the evolution of our species and our consciousness. Greg Braden talks about this is like, in order for us to be who we're here to be, we have to evolve now. And that really is us going deep internally into ourselves. And I mean, yes, taking action on the 3D level, but at the same time, we're not getting out of here live. So how, you know, do we evolve? Is Christ coming out of the sky or is it coming from within? And that archetype of love and, um, healing and truth, even if crucified and on the on the cross and stone throwed and all that, um, we have a real chance to up level. And that's why forever and ever, lifetime after lifetime, in this 
I can say, I, I will never take this uh, poison. I will never t- uh, bend my knee before the king and queen. I will never let go of my sovereignty because the only thing we really have is our DNA, our lineage and our soul. And if this is totally not in alignment with my soul, then they can fucking keep it. Cause I'm, you could put me at a guillotine and I'll laugh like they've done in the past. You know, the ones laughing at the guillotine because they can't touch you. You're completely above and beyond that unless you're strapped into the fear. And, you know, Victor Frankl's man search for meaning all in the, you know, in the prison camps. And he found this beautiful thing that impacted people uh, through his book because it's true, you know, and that's what we need to hold now. And and um, yeah, I know it seems quite simplistic, but I don't know. That's kind of what I'm operating on. And in the meantime, trying to build the new earth up level myself, love as many people and help as many people as possible. And, uh, you know, but, uh, ultimately we also need to make those, those connections where, where should we go? What should we do? But I, I I'm just refusing to live in fear at this point, even though I slip into it because it's everywhere at your gas station. Uh, it's telling you about COVID-19 while you're pumping your gas here in the U S you know, at the grocery store, I'm listening to something on, on my phone. I take it off and it's, COVID-19, get your injections. And it's just, this is why people like ourselves have not fallen into the program narrative is because we weren't listening to the news, man. We weren't listening to all this shit in the television. And and you can see the ones that have, I mean, ultimately you can really see like, wow, you were really listening to to 101X, you know, radio station for years, or you were really you know, and so they're tuned into it and um, we have to tune it out and uh, move forward and reclaim our sovereignty and also know that we're interconnected to people just like yourselves around the world. And um, that's uh, that's how I plan to move forward. Um, but I'm also like connecting with land projects and because that feels fun and exciting and whatever's fun and exciting for us as uh, light workers or ones that just want to see a better world, your heart will guide you. And, um, that's kind of the direction I'm going to continue to follow because that's the only truth I know at the end of the day. Definitely on board with, uh, with everything you said. And, uh, that's why they do call it programming, right? It's called programming for a reason. (laughs) Uh, tune into your local programming, actually tune into your, um, you know, your, your soul programming is, is really what we're reaching for. So just to end it off, um, I'd like to thank you both for uh, just sharing and um, and bringing yourselves forward. I look forward to uh, having you back on at one point to discuss further. Um, in you know, I know we could have went into so many different things at greater depth, but I, I believe this is a really nice start. Um, you've both uh, um, have allowed have allowed this this podcast to uh, start off on a a good foot. It is the first podcast of the 12th cast dedicated to the 13th gate. So thank you very much for sharing and for being present in the world. Keep on shining your light. Keep on bringing the darkness forward and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you.